Primer, Episode 2, Places, Peoples, and Cultures of Essos and the Other Continents, Part 6, The Port City of Pentos. The city of Pentos, located about halfway down the western coast of Essos, is really close in physical proximity to King's Landing. As you can see, it's literally just across the narrow sea from the capital of Westeros. In fact, you could hop on a ship in King's Landing and take a trip to Pentos in roughly half the time it would take you to go to Dorne, even though Dorne is on the same continent as King's Landing. And it's not just this geographical proximity between Pentos and King's Landing that makes them so similar. Genetically speaking, the people of both these cities would be considered cousins. Like most of the bottom half of Westeros, the people of Pentos are mostly descendants of the Andals, like they have majority Andal blood. The city of Pentos used to belong to these Andals, and unlike most of the other cities that the Valyrians took from these Andals, the Pentoshi weren't all that into keeping their Valyrian bloodlines pure. They weren't all precious about it, so they intermarried and mixed their Valyrian blood with that of the Andals they conquered. And while you can still find silver-haired, purple-eyed, more or less pure-blooded Valyrians in Pentos to this day, there just aren't as many of those kinds of people in this city as there are in some other free cities. In terms of geographical features of Pentos, the city is a port, so it faces the ocean on one side and on the other side, it's surrounded by grassy hills called the Velvet Hills and a flat, fertile plain of farmland called the Flatlands. The climate tends towards something similar to that of countries around the northern end of the Mediterranean Sea. When I look for a real-life historical counterpart to Pentos, my best guess is that this city is based on Florence during the Renaissance. But instead of being landlocked like Florence, Pentos is on the coast and faces the ocean. For those of you who don't know, Florence is the capital of Tuscany, a region of Italy. Now, why am I saying that Pentos is parallel to Florence? Well, let's look at one of the natural resources that comes from the area that surrounds the city of Florence. The biggest or most famous export anyway is wine, and Pentoshi wine happens to be very famous in our story. It's well known and loved. And just like Florence under the control of the Medici family during the Renaissance, Pentos is well known all over the world for arts and culture. The Pentoshi people can claim having this sophisticated culture because the city is a port and it's located between the continents of Westeros and Essos. As such, it tends to get trade from all around the world. Like the way olden-timey Venice used to have trade from North Africa, the Indian subcontinent, the Caliphate, and even the Empire of China. You can imagine it's the same role that Pentos plays in the world. It just doesn't have canals. I know it's not a direct one-to-one -one comparison. I'm just trying to give you a context to imagine what these places and people were like. But this contract with the wide variety of different cultures is what makes Pentos such a rich and erudite city. Unlike the cities of Lorath, Norvos, or Kohor, Pentos follows the secular, pluralistic philosophy of their Valyrian ancestors. They never left Valyria because they thought they were holier or better than anyone else. The city of Pentos started off as just a military strategic outpost and eventually grew to a trading outpost. They never had official religion there. To this day, everyone in the city is free to practice whatever they want so long as they follow the laws of the land. The city is full of temples to every god you can possibly imagine. So like I said, we have this pluralistic society, which means people speak lots of different languages, are racially diverse, and they all worship different gods. So. Who rules over them? What's the government of Pentos like? Well, the official person in charge is the Prince of Pentos. But 
the actual power resides with the Council of Magisters, as we've seen from a lot of the other cities that we've explored. They're a group of rich, powerful men who are the real leaders of this city. So if you're asking yourself why they even have a prince if they're just going to do whatever the council wants, the answer is that there are ceremonial duties that the Prince of Pentos must perform for religious reasons. Every year, the Prince of Pentos gets to have sex with two of the prettiest virgin girls in the entire city. The girl they crown, the maid of the sea, and the girl they crown, the maid of the fields. Supposedly, by taking these girls' virginity, the prince ensures a bountiful harvest for the fishermen and farmers of Pentos and the lands and seas surrounding it. And I know, I know, you're probably ready to check me right now. Didn't I just say that the people of Pentos have no official religion? So why would their leader, their prince, be practicing some kind of religious duties? Yeah, they don't actually have a religion. This ritual is from a time before the atheist Valyrians took over. But imagine this. You're a Valyrian guy who doesn't believe in any gods, and you've been selected by your peers to govern the city. But the catch is you have to perform a religious ceremony involving having sex with two different virgin beauty queens every year for the rest of your life. Would you be eager to do away with this ritual even if you didn't believe in it? Hell nah, B. Course not. You'd be all like, bring on the virgins, sign me up. The only downside to this system is that if anything goes wrong, if there's a drought or an invasion or something terrible, the Council of Magisters will slit the prince's throat because he didn't please the gods enough with his sex skills or something. A smart prince would probably bribe the pirates not to attack the city or hire cell swords to protect everyone while also carefully watching over food supplies so that no disaster could occur and his throat would remain uncut. In the past, other princes figured out this little formula or principle, and they did it. They pulled strings with the councils of magisters and acted like careful managers of the city and its resources. Those guys ended up spending the rest of their lives enjoying the perks of being prince. So bottom line, if you've got skills in both sex and sim city, and you roll a natural 20 for charisma, you could be an excellent candidate for the Prince of Pentos. Like a lot of the other free cities, Pentos has a history of slavery. But it is just a boat ride down the coast from Bravos. And remember how we talked about the city of Bravos and how it was founded by escaped slaves? Well, the ex-slaves didn't like the idea of slavery being practiced so close to their borders, so they went to war with Pentos at least six times. In the end, the two cities negotiated for a peace, and Pentos agreed not to keep slaves anymore. However, through economic trickery and the cunning use of legal loopholes, the Pentoshi were able to basically turn the servant class, people who were essentially free men and women, and earn money for the jobs they did, they turned them into slaves in all but name. This was accomplished by paying them wages so low that they couldn't survive without basically selling themselves into slavery again just to get enough money for food and shelter, which made the servants indebted to the former masters. And once indebted to a former master, these not-quite-slaves were subject to the same oppressive restrictions and brutal punishments that were permitted when slavery was still legal.